You know, I think in Minneapolis, watching George Floyd's death um, and the, four the actions of the four police officers that were involved has been a huge wake-up call for so many in Minneapolis to see what many already knew, which is that our police department is not keeping every member of our community safe. And so I think step one for us is to tell the truth. Nine council members from communities all across the city of all different backgrounds standing together to tell the truth and say, this system isn't working for too many of our neighbors for too long. Our reform efforts have failed and we have done many, many attempts at reform and new leadership in the department and many things. Uh, and we still see um, this tragic death. And so I think the wake up of our community is what's driving the city council's announcement yesterday. And now the hard work begins for us to rebuild systems that really work to keep all of our community safe. Yeah, and you know, a lot of us were asked if we could imagine a future without police back in 2017 when we, when we were running for office. And I answered yes to that question. To me, that, that future is a long way away and it would take an enormous amount of investment in things that we know work to keep people safe. I mean, for a lot of folks in our community, stable housing is a safety issue. Having access to healthcare is a safety issue. And so having, you know, I think one thing folks are asking is, to stop investing so much money in this militarized police force and instead invest in the things that our community really needs. So, you know, I know the statement was bold and I, I stand by that bold statement, but the work ahead of us will be long. It will include every member of our community. It has to. And, you know, I think we have very immediate things. We have a state action against our police department, which gives us legal mechanisms in the very short term. You know, there's lessons from all over the country, all over the world that we're looking to, um, to take immediate steps while we work toward building the systems that we would need to imagine that, that future. Because for those of us for whom the system is working, I think we need to step back and imagine what it would feel like to already live in that reality where calling the police may mean more harm is done. And so in the very immediate, we have to lean into whatever changes we can make in our existing police department. You know, I think we look to cities like Camden, New Jersey, that completely restructured their department as we build up systems. And we've already done that. We, have, we are not starting from scratch. We have invested in community-based safety strategies. We have knowledge in our community across the city. We've done an analysis of all the reasons people call 911 and have looked at ways we can shift the response away from armed police officers into a more appropriate response for mental health calls, um, for some domestic violence calls, for um, health related issues. And so the groundwork is laid already in Minneapolis for us to, to build on that, to learn from folks around the world, but really also to listen to our community and put those community voices front and center as we build up those systems even further. You know, that's why I said at the beginning that it starts with telling the truth. And I think we've been afraid of a lot of things, of that, those political dynamics, of what would happen in our city, you know, to have our police force hearing these kinds of words. And that fear is what we have to really work through. Because again, that's the fear that so many in our community are facing. That's the fear that we see, you know, from George Floyd's family or the family of Jamar Clark or Justine Damon, who were also killed by Minneapolis police who have told us we never want to see this happen again. And so those efforts that we have taken so far to stop this, to make sure no one is killed in this way have not worked. So our statement is to try something new.